Hey, I, I want to continue through a, a series that we started called Suffering Well, and, and um, I'm going to go to 1 Peter chapter 1, and if you have a Bible with you, you can turn there with me. I'm going to look at just a, really, a couple of verses and then highlight some other verses as well. But 1 Peter chapter 1, we, we haven't gotten real far if you've been a part uh, of New Life for a while, we, we, we've pretty much have hung out the first two or three verses of, of chapter one, uh, but it's so, so, so good. And so we're going to just hang out here a little bit longer. First Peter chapter one, if you don't have a Bible with you, uh, there's a gray one in front of you and you can open up to page 1,661 in that if, if you want to follow along. But if you look at a uh, a crossing of scripture, you you will find that uh, the Bible talks a lot about eternity, a, a lot about rewards, a lot about heaven, uh, and, and this very and it's a very real sense that as you read scripture, as we dig into the Word of God, that that we learn that we, we're here on Earth for purpose, with a purpose, like like we we know that. But it's also very clear as we look at Scripture that this is never meant to be our home. That the world that we live in is never meant to be the place that we completely uh, think about, dwell on, work for. That, that, that this is never our reward. Like the world that we live in, in, in the light of eternity is just so minute. And, and so this is not the end. And, and we see that in Scripture in both ways, both this idea that while God has called you here, he's called you here on purpose, for a purpose, but he also has a continuation of that purpose, and that's eternity. And one of the things that when you're going through a difficult time to keep in perspective is the fact that our time in this world is very, very, very temporary. As a matter of fact, from the time of Abraham, God had communicated that, that, uh, that they were strangers in this world, that they were aliens in the world, and that they were, they were simply like, looking for e- an eternal home. In Genesis 12, God tells Abraham, hey, leave your country, leave your people, leave your father's household, go to a land that, that I will show you. And so Abraham takes off. Uh, traditionally, we know that, that Abraham understood that to mean uh, Canaan or the promised land. But there's also this, this inner truth that Hebrews highlights when it says this, that uh, Hebrews chapter t- uh, 11, verse 8 says that he, referring to Abraham, was actually looking forward to the city with foundations who architect and builder is God. So even Abraham, as he's looking towards a promised land, understands that this is just the shadow of what's to come. That he was looking for something bigger, something deeper. Even that the temple, the Old Testament temple, was just a shadow of, of the reality in the heavens. And so there's this sense in Ecclesiastes that says that, hey, eternity is written in the hearts, in our hearts. Like we're all aware that there's something more, amen, in our lives, something greater than what we taste, touch, smell, feel. There's, there's something more that eternity is, is, is present, and we're just aware of our, of our uh, eternal nature in, in Christ. And, and, and so uh, talk about that today. First Peter's writing a letter to uh, what's called the diaspora, or those who have been scattered, Christians who are being removed from their homes, uh, often left homeless outside of Palestine, um, they were they move into uh, what we call modern day Turkey, but this this persecution that was happening in, in New Testament believers' lives, like that's the trials that they were facing was uh, loss of jobs, loss of homes, loss of family, imprisonment, torture, abuse, death, death of loved ones, and so like Peter's writing them saying, hey, like I, I just want to give you some instruction. How do you how do you suffer well? How do you do that well? And I know for me, I, I don't do it so well. I, I don't, anybody, like any good sufferers? Like anybody, like, you know what, Pastor, like that, I'm like, I got this. I'm just curious because, like, we need to hang out. Like some people have so much faith that no matter what they go through, they're just like, you know what, 
praise God, it's all going to work out. I, I don't know. I, I'm just not there yet. At some day when I'm 99 on my deathbed, maybe I'll make it, and then Jesus will take me, you know? Um, but man, so here's what Peter says. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect. Exiles scattered throughout the province of Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, and Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkle with his blood, grace and peace be yours in abundance. Peace, rather praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Inheritance. That is what? It's kept in heaven for you. And so we talked about some highlights over the last few weeks. Like how do you go through a difficult season or difficult time and do that well? And so I'm just going to review the first thing we talked about throughout the last few weeks is, hey, number one, you should expect difficult times. We've talked a lot about uh, this idea that maybe in our culture we feel like difficulty uh, should not be for a Christian, but that's just contrary to Scripture. So Peter almost says, hey, listen, you need to understand this. First Peter 1.17, that there's wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. First Peter 4.12 says, do not be surprised at the fiery trials when they come upon you to test you as though something strange was happening to you. Jesus promised suffering in the world in John 16, 33. And Philippians 1, 29 says, you've been called, this is awesome, you've been called to believe in Christ and to suffer for him. Number two, we said that, hey, remember that you were chosen. No matter what happens in your life, that you are chosen, you are Christ, you are called by him. Number three, we said, remember that you're an alien. We touched on that, and today we're going to hang out here a little bit longer, but you're an alien. Like, this is not your home. We believe in aliens. You are one. If you're a follower of Christ, this is not home for you. We said that, number four, that God is sovereign. How do you suffer well? You remember that, you know, God is in absolute control. He'll be glorified this. All he can do is good. I don't understand the situation, but God is good, and he'll be good through it. So you remind yourself that that God's got a perfect plan, and he will be honored. He'll be glorified, even if I don't understand it today. God is sovereign. Number five, uh, (laughs) in the midst of it, we suffer well by just giving God praise. Just lifting up our hands and saying, God, I I don't understand all that's happening in my world, in my life, but I just give you praise because you're worthy of it, because you're good, and I just honor you. Number six, we put your hope in God. Not in your situation, not in your job, not in relationships, but your hope, your confidence We say, God, I I, I trust in you. My hope is in you. Number seven today, how do we suffer well? We live in the light of eternity. Can I just share something with you? I've shared this in, in parts before, but like, do you realize that whatever you're going through is not, is not the end of the story? That, that whether it's a good moment in your life, you're like, yes, or whether it's like a oh, moment, like, it's not the end of the story. Whether it's a good time or a difficult time, that, that if you will, that your life is very much like a, a, a book. 
and that God has authored your life. He's offered my life. And if we're really, really honest, if we really can comprehend how long eternity is, can I just share with you that, that, that your life in earth, on earth, might be like a page or a chapter? Can, does that, do you get that? Like, like, like God has your book written. He's the author of your story. He knows the ending he knows what it's going to look like. He knows that it'll turn out good. He knows that everything that went on will work best. Like, God knows the end of your story. He's written it. But some of you are still on, like, chapter number, you know, chapter number two. And I, I just need, you just need to know that, listen, like, God is still writing your story. He's still writing the book of your life. And... Maybe you want to close your ears real quick um, just to give you what the end looks like. Just go ahead, you know, if you don't want the ending, but like, just like God wins. Like that's the end of the story. Like he wins. Uh, let me share just another example of this. I, I'm not really, like I'll watch a lot of movies, but I don't usually, move, don't usually uh, parallel or use me- movies as a metaphor for Topic, but this this one's so good. So I was watching uh, Infinity Wars, and I'm not a nerd. I, okay, maybe, anyway, I'm not an Infinity War nerd. Or whatever, you know, just work with me. Some of you guys know every character and every storyline. I'm just saying that I'm not that. So I'm gonna butcher something. Forgive me. That's what I'm trying to say. So in Infinity Wars, I'm watching, and uh, Doctor Strange has this ability to see. Uh, basically every scene in, in time, every possible outcome. And he's sitting there with, you know, the infinity stones going, what are we going to do? And if you know much about the movie, like uh, like whoever gets these infinity storms can really d- just stop life as it is and the whole world changes. And, and basically uh, he's sitting there and he sees like 14,605 scenes different scenarios and he comes out and says hey you know what uh, how many ways are there to win he says there's one and so as we're watching the movie it looks horrible people are dying it looks like right how many are with me how, how many are familiar with like infinity wars like anybody thank you i just needed that because otherwise otherwise i'm looking like you guys aren't getting this and so <laughs> so, so, like, if you're watching the movie and you're like, oh, no, everyone is dying. It didn't work. That's not how movies are supposed to end. So you have to get back to the next movie to find out that they're living out the one scene, the only scene that could really work and bring about everything as it should be. And I just, you just need to know this today that no matter what you're going through, like, God isn't a movie. He's King of kings and Lord of lords, and he's working out this movie, this scene in your life. And right now, maybe it doesn't all make sense, but he sees the ending, and he knows that it all works out. Like, does that make sense? Are you with me? Maybe if you need a refresher, go ahead and watch Infinity Wars or something today, and you're like, oh, okay, now I get it. Your story is your win. God, God wins. It, it's playing out. So Peter says to those that lost everything, he says, praise be to God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, in his great mercy has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance. He reminds them the inheritance. What kind of inheritance is it? Like, what can they look forward to? It's one that will never perish. It'll never spoil. It will never fade. An inheritance kept in heaven. And so if you're taking notes, I just have three kind of sub points under this. I changed the words a little bit. Um, so like write this down if, if you're taking notes. It's an inheritance that's untouched by death. And so our faith is built when we recognize, hey, you know what? I'm coming into an inheritance that death can't touch. Do, 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 do. Can't touch this. I don't know. I don't even have two services to undo what I just did. It's like, this is it. This is, I got one and done. So untouched by death, 
Um, <laughs> Pray you, Pastor. That one I get. <laughs> oh my God. An inheritance untouched by death. Can you just imagine that what God has for you for eternity will never perish? Never dies away. Just think about that just for a moment. I, I, I know our infinite minds have a hard time grasping that something doesn't deteriorate, that, that it doesn't die away, that there's no death, that there's no loss of a loved one, that there's no loss of a pet. By the way, I'm going to, like, I totally am going to just ride the back of a, of a tiger when I get to heaven. I, like, that's been my dream, and I'm like, yep, here we come. Anyway, so different topic. Um, so no loss of a pet, uh, no loss of someone you care about. Like, like, and the people that Peter's writing to, like, they've seen death. They've seen it all over the place. They've seen people being killed and martyred and, and, and losing everything. And he's like, hey, you guys just need to know something that when we celebrate eternity in the heavens, that like there'll be no death, that'll be, it'll be no, you know, no decay, that your friends aren't going to die, that death no more. As a matter of fact, I, I love this glimpse we get of it in the book of Revelation uh, chapter 21. And just enjoy this with me this morning, if you would. This is what the end of the story looks like. Again, I, I know I'm kind of ruining the end for you, but just this is so good. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there's no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Verse 4, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. He will wipe away every tear from their eye, and there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who is seated on the throne, what a great picture of our God. Finished, accomplished. I'm making everything new. Revelation 21, 1 through 5. We have an inheritance that Peter says, listen, while you're on this earth, yes, you have a purpose. God's brought you here for something. But just understand, like just understand that what you are living now is only a short part of eternity. I was, do you remember when you were really little? Some of you might still be there, and you're like, and something happened when you were like in first grade. Remember that? And I don't, I don't know what your story was for, like for me. I. Well, here we go. Authenticity. Um, had an accident. In first grade. You know what that is? Interpretation. I peed my pants. And I remember trying to hide it. And like, uh, like the world, I thought the world was over. Do you remember stories like this? And like you really thought it's done, it's over. I will never show my face again. And it gets just over. And now I'm 50. And I realize as 50-year-old perspective that I think I'd rather pee my pants sometimes and right than go through some of the stuff that we that we go through as adults. I'm like, okay, sign me up. Just, I had an accident from the pulpit, okay. I would rather do that. But sometimes our 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 
our mentality is so off. And if we can just change from the present moment and get this bird's eye view of the, of the heavenly, we'll look back and go, oh my gosh, that was nothing. And so de- death is no more. Number two, he says this, says it's an inheritance that's unstained by evil. And to that point, I'm not, I'm not sure that we completely understand the effects of sin. When, when Genesis says that in, when you eat of the fruit that death will come, that sin will come, I'm not really sure we, we get it. But let me just give you for a glimpse, just a reminder of all that sin has brought and is affecting our world today. Sickness and disease that kills, like cancer and Parkinson's and COPD, diabetes, artery disease that leads to heart attacks and strokes, things like missing bones and blindness and deafness and and can't speak, and things like mental illness and anxiety and eating disorders and bipolar, PTSD and depression, things like sexual confusion, like I feel gay, I, I feel like a woman, I feel like a man, like sin has touched every part of our lives, everything we do, sin has affected. Everything. Our hope is this, that we will get an inheritance that can't be touched by evil, by sin at all. No sickness, no disease, no missing bones, no missing limbs, no blindness, no deafness, no mental illness, no depression, no sexual confusion, no sin, no deception, no pride of getting in the way, no insecurity, no shame, no slander, no jealousy, no personal agenda, no hidden motives, no miscommunication. We will live in a place and existence for the rest of eternity that can't be tainted, skewed, or affected at all by sin. Let me give you a third description. We are facing an inheritance that will be unimpaired by time, that will not fade away, that rust won't decay, things don't break down. Jesus reminds us in Matthew 6, verse 19, he says, hey, listen, don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but instead store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. I don't know about you, but everything I own breaks down. Like the day after I buy it. I just don't understand. It's like in, you know, in the parking lot or whatever, it's like they have this anti-rust. And then the day I pull off the, the, you know, out of the parking lot, it's like, it's gone. And and there it comes, this brown, anyway, issues. Paul, the apostle Paul appeals to eternity. Paul's getting older. He sees himself slowing down. Listen to this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 and 18. Though outwardly, we are wasting away. Anybody? Maybe you don't want to raise a hand. <laughs> Anybody feel like you're wasting away outwardly? Yeah. Outwardly, you're wasting away. Here, I'm just... I remember this happened a couple of years ago, <laughs> and uh, I touched my skin. <laughs> Some of you know where this is going to go. <laughs> I'm like, what is happening? How did I add like five layers? <laughs> and, you know, you see like this, like this bounce back, and now it just kind of hangs out there for a while. <laughs> and, and I realized that, man, I, I'm, I, I'm deteriorating. I'm, I'm getting older and falling apart and wasting away. But like, here's what Paul says. Outwardly, we're wasting away. And this is true, but inwardly, we're being renewed day by day. How many say amen to this? Like sometimes my body, right, isn't keeping up with the spirit that God gave to me. 
So inwardly, I'm growing. I'm more ready to have kids now at 50 than I was at 20. <laughs> Someone said no. <laughs> Goes on to say, for our light, and momentary moment. This is so crazy. All that Paul is going through, he's, he's about ready to be executed, uh, the killed, hung upside down. For the, our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that, out far, that outweighs them all. In other words, he says, listen, what we're going through, as horrible as you might be going through, as devastating and truly horrendous as it is, Paul says this, Scripture says this, that in the light of eternity, it's momentarily, it's moment, it's just a moment, so what do you do with that? Like, how do you respond to that? Verse 18, so we fix our eyes, we set our course, we put our hope in, we put our confidence in, we, we put ourselves in the direction of, we, we focus on, we focus on not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. I have shared Many times that I have struggled in my faith over some of the things that happen in our culture that I simply have the hardest time grasping. Slavery, abuse, murder, terrorism, starvation, sexual, you know, sexual abuse, uh, like physical abuse, all these things are like, it just, I, 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 can get, I can get so caught up in going, man, like, God, How? And I have had to over and over again look to you, God, and say, like, I know that you're good, and all you can do is good. And so I know that in this situation, you will somehow turn it for the good. But right now, I'm just struggling. So I don't know what you're going through, but I know this. There is a glory to come that will outshine the darkest moments of your life. And that our hope has never been in this world. It's always been in eternity. Let's listen to a few scriptures and I'm going to close. John 14, 1 through 3, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. My Father's house, there are many rooms if we're not so I would not have told you, but I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. 1 Corinthians 7, 29, this time is short. So use the things of the world as if not engrossed in them, for the world in its present form is simply passing away. 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 7, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out of it. James 4:14. 4, yet you do not even know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for just a little while, and then it vanishes. Colossians 3, 1 through 2. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above not on earthly things. Philippians 3, 13 through 14, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And let me just hit Psalm 39, 5. You have made my days a few hand breaths, and my lifetime is nothing in your sight. Surely everyone stands as a mirror 